The day has finally come for Black Myth Wukong to release, and I finally got my hands on it. I've been playing the game since 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm getting ready to go to bed, and I thought I wanted to record my final thoughts before I, you know, head on off to Z-Town. I do want to say that from what I've played in the game, from looking at the skill tree, from looking at the different systems of the game, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's a combination of of a ton of different games. So some games of old, like your Ninja Gaidens, your Atogis, your even a little bit of Tenchu is kind of in there a little bit. I, I felt that as well as more importantly, I felt Neo, I felt Neo 2, I felt Wulong Fallen Dynasty, and I felt a bit of Sekiro in there as well. Whereas with Sekiro, you have perfect parries. In this game, you have perfect dodges, which, are pivotal. I, I I can't state that enough. How pivotal that they are, they are. I was fighting against the bronze head prayer or whatever you call the blue dude. I went to fight him before I fought against the official first boss of the game. And let's just say, dude mopped me up a few times. He he was like one to two shot. Like he mopped me up a couple of times. And it, it I'm not gonna lie, the fight was a lot of fun. And then after I beat him, the game just difficulty kind of went from like a peak to a, tra a downward trajectory and i was just kind of destroying any boss or anything that came in my way one thing that i will say is that the boss transformations are a huge game changer even if you don't use the spirit transformations that you get which you utilize by doing l2 r2 if you're playing on ps5 like myself you don't really need that for you to like destroy a boss uh, i i think it's also because of my build because i went with a damage heavy build <laughs> where like getting a lot of different extra damage attacks on everything so my immobilize does extra damage when enemies are immobilized sprint gives me a extra damage as well because i like to sprint a lot to get to the boss to get within position so that i can then do my lunge attack that I have with my light attack so that I could get in, you know, a little bit of that commando pro action. The game is a lot of fun. It's everything that I was expecting it to be when I first saw it all the way back four to five years ago. I will say this, I'm like probably at the tail end of chapter one because I'm getting ready to fight against uh, Big Bear, Big Kuma. And so far what I've experienced in the game from a performance standpoint, because I know that that was one of the main issues that people were pretty much highlighting as they were waiting for the game to release for uh, PS5. In terms of performance, I've experienced a few frame drops here and there in boss fights but it wasn't anything that was too bad that it was highly noticeable it caused me to down or anything like that it was mostly when i was like behind the boss and then i'm wailing on the boss the boss would do like a big attack that would create like some type of particles or something like that and i'll just like still be wailing on the boss because i'm out i'm out of the way of the attack so i didn't necessarily experience the downside of those frame drops as far as anything else regarding performance wise i didn't see it most of the times it just happened infrequently during boss fights and it depended on the type of attacks that the boss was doing like i know the naga dude or the what was he the whitehead noble dude that i fought in the ocean area before you get tell after, before you re ring the third bell i know that was there and in the water certain attacks that he did that would slow down the game but other than that like the game was running beautifully for me like there wasn't a time where i noticed that oh my god that drop is so significant no it was just a consistent smooth experience outside of those points so it, it wasn't a big deal i played thousands of times worse if people come around and they they have that point i guess that they want to push i would say take it with a grain of salt as for a bit more of a deep dive into the mechanical structure of the game i do want to say that a lot of its action rpg elements heavily remind me of other games that i've played in the past in particular neo uh especially with its skill tree like system the way that i built <laughs> my wukong is exactly like how i build my characters in neo which is basically focus on foundational skills such as health stamina as well as looking for the things that will help boost the attacks that I would primarily do, and then just try to focus on that in my playstyle while looking as flashy as possible. I'm not gonna lie to you. I do a lot of dying flying, a lot of flying dive kicks, as well as a bunch of like heavy attacks after those flying dive kicks to just, you know, have a nice one-two punch whenever I'm fighting against smaller mobs. 
and it's it's a lot of goddamn old fun. Especially, it, it didn't get old. That's all I'm gonna say. Over the course of the two hours and thirty minutes I was playing, it didn't get old. Now, as for other mechanics in the game, like uh, I would say boss mechanics and a variety of boss skill sets, I will say that I was expecting a little bit more from the boss fights. But granted, I am only in chapter one. The last boss that I fought was the Whitehead Noble, which he has two phases. He has his first humanoid phase, and then his second phase is him turning into a Naga. I will say this. I was expecting a little bit more in those boss fights, and there was one cheap boss fight. You know who you are, you Bama. Because when I thought I was about to get a cutscene, I put the controller down, I took a sip of my juice, and then next thing you know, this man is sending purple orbs at my face. Like, bro. Bro. <laughs> That's that's just what I would say. I, I was expecting a little bit more difficulty from the bosses. And I guess that's on me. Because even when I was looking at some of the boss fights, um, when we were taking a look, trying to figure out what Black Myth Wukong would be like, I could tell that like some of the complexity and the actions, they weren't really like there. They didn't chain together succinctly. And it, it I don't know. I, I I think in the final product, I was kind of hoping that that was just something I was seeing in video and not necessarily going to experience in game. But I will say that bosses have uh, a lot of downtime in between attacks, which leaves massive openings for you, especially if you build your Destined One correctly. And in building your Destined One correctly, you can get a ton of different staggers on a boss. You can keep the boss in place for like... I would say a quarter of their health at a time before you get your immobilized back up. And it, it's crazy. And then especially because like certain bosses in the game, like some of them stagger heavy, especially on smashing attacks like the bronze head prayman or like or prayer men, however you say that. But him, I kind of stun locked him when I beat him. <laughs> and it was kind of crazy because he was he was smashing me at first. But yeah, I'm I'm honestly excited to play more of this game. I'm just hopping off because I got to go to sleep to wake up for work in the morning. But yeah, if you all are playing, happy playing, man. And I hope you all are having a blast like I am. Y'all all take care. I'll catch you on the next one.